to me. So offense is what Satan used on Jesus and offense is what he will use on you. Three things you have to remember about offenses. One is that you are unable to avoid encountering offenses according to Luke 17 verse 1, meaning offenses will come. The reasons to be offended will always be there. The second thing we have to remember about offenses is that we are able to avoid causing offenses. While we are not able to avoid encountering them, we are able to stop causing offenses to other people. Meaning we, we can stop people from being offended because we cause them to be offended. We can help to stop that but we cannot stop from offenses happening to us or somebody you know doing something that we have a reason to be offended by. And the third thing is honestly your spiritual life and ministry can only go as far as your ability to overcome offenses. Jesus says, blessed is he who is not offended at me. There were people who left Jesus' ministry in spite of miracles, signs and wonders. Some who probably were in his larger circle of disciples who were used by the power of the Holy Spirit to expel demons. But when he said certain things, they were offended. So many people quit ministry. So many people walk away from church. So many people, they do not grow spiritually and some are trapped in the demonic trap of offense. They may justify their feelings, they may justify how all oh, people mistreated me but in reality behind all of that is a demonic trap that you fell for. Those feelings of self-pity, those feelings of pride are nothing short but a trap of the enemy. So let's quickly look at the profile of an offended person. Number one, an offended person is somebody who is entitled. A person with offense feels they are owed something. They value what they have in themselves and feel that they have worked so hard and they deserve to be elevated. The truth is they felt they deserved something that they were not entitled to. Entitled people feel it is their duty and responsibility even though if it's not. And so the problem with entitlement is that it really is the root and it's what fuels pride. It's what fuels offense. Offended people are always entitled people. They don't have a serving heart. They don't have a, a you know, um, a, a lifestyle of a crucified mindset where we live for Jesus, we carry our cross. They're very entitled people. The second characteristic of an offended person is of course they're proud. Prideful people are self-reliant instead of God-reliant. When pride attacks, it doesn't allow us to see the full picture. You know, Satan didn't struggle with pornography, weed or some other moral sins. His, his sin was pride and this pride caused him to fall. It turned beautiful archangel into a nasty devil. And that's exactly what pride does. It takes beautiful, gifted, talented people. It turns them nasty. It turns them crazy. It turns them honestly like really, really bad people. Why? Because pride is really the root of offense. Number three profile of a offended person is unfairness. People with offense often feel that church leaders have treated them unfairly. A common complaint that we hear is this, they don't value my gifting. They don't appreciate my anointing. I don't get recognized enough. People get hurt and build up resentment and bitterness when they are not being utilized in the church. What people don't re recognize is that under proper well-structured church more likely the person wants to be used and valued for their time. They don't realize is that when you are in a bigger church, okay, it's very difficult a lot of times for every single person to be noticed. That's why we don't go to church to be recognized, we go to church to serve. We don't go to church for applause, we go to church so that we can glorify Jesus and serve one another. As a pastor, I'm not a church so that people can build my ego. I am in church so I can build the kingdom of God. And sometimes if we don't get treated with the respect that we feel like we need or all of this stuff, we let it go because we're not there for that reason. And so it's very important to understand if you are an offended person and you constantly feel like it's not fair, my anointing is not being recognized, you know, I am not being honored all the time. Please understand, 
church doesn't exist to honor your anointing. Church exists to honor Jesus and your anointing exists to build His kingdom. So the question is, is the kingdom of Jesus being built? Yes, but I'm not being recognized. Is Jesus being worshipped? You didn't die on the cross, nor did I. As long as Jesus is being glorified, the kingdom is being advanced, then we should be happy that we can play a small part in advancement of that kingdom. Should churches improve on recognizing other people? Yes, but we should also don't blow things out of the proportion to make it feel like it's about us. Church doesn't exist to grow your gift. Your gift exists to grow the kingdom of God. Your gift exists for His glory. And so we need to snap out out of this pride and out of this arrogance and honestly out of this thing that it's not fair. Well, it's not about how people treat you. It's really about the gift, the favor God has given you. And I've noticed this about my life is sometimes the more unfair people treat me, the more favor God will release into my life if I handle that unfairness properly. If I don't get bitter, resentful and start demanding things from people and become self-entitled, easily offended and spoiled little brat, but I just simply become a servant, God releases His favor. The fourth profile of an offended person is respect. They demand respect. The world has taught us to demand respect, but Bible has taught us to humble ourselves. The, the respect is not something you demand, it's something that is given to you. Respect is something you can sow into another person, but you don't walk around demanding that from other people. And so it's very important that we live in humility and we embrace the character of Jesus, which is I came to serve. Jesus didn't say I come to be respected. Jesus didn't demand respect from anybody. In fact, he got very little of that respect from his disciples for three and a half years, from the Pharisees and from the crowds, but he still served. Even in the Last Supper, he would gird himself and wash their feet. And that's really what leadership is. That's really what being in the church is. And we all love the cute idea, Jesus make me a servant, until we start getting treated like servants. Then we whine and complain, leave churches, switch, switch pastors, you know, criticize everybody, gossip everybody. But in reality, if we really dive deep, it's because we're so ego driven. You know, your ego is like fingernails. Your fingernails need to be trimmed constantly. Okay, but when you trim your fingernails, you don't cut your fingers. So your identity, your value is in Jesus. But there's that ego that a lot of times grows on our identity in Christ. And that needs to be trimmed regularly. And sometimes there are situations where we don't get the respect that is owed to us. We don't get the recognition, the thank you. And that's the moment where the Lord injures our pride, where the Lord uses those situations to trim that ego so that all the dirt doesn't come under that ego. And so that we can walk in purity and keep the humble heart that the Lord has called us to have. The fifth profile of a person who is offended is control. Offended people desire to control the situation. And a lot of times, you know, when you control and try to have your own way, this is what begins to happen is that it will always lead to offense.